Good morning. Welcome to Henrietta Christian Fellowship, and this is the live stream of our service uh, on the 19th of uh, April, and uh, just welcome. Uh, if you're joining us for the first time, we'll uh, be uh, going into a time of worship, and then from there, uh, just uh, some time to pray for people and a uh, message from God's Word, and so uh, thank you for uh, joining us this morning. Uh, you know, as I'm going to weigh in this morning, and uh, something just about the message, and I started thinking about it. You know how uh, you know you know what is what is Jesus you know really like you know and uh, and just the danger you know that we can fall into of trying to remake Jesus to be more like us you know and I'll, it was a little cool out there but I, I have this little uh, convertible that was given to me so I thought just because I can I'm putting the top down well it was, it was cold out there okay and so as I'm breezing down the road in this in, in the convertible and everything like that I said I have a hard time picturing Jesus breezing down the road in a convertible you know and I, but that's okay it's not the kind of things that I'm talking about but just they had tendency to just you know like try to you know squeeze Jesus into an image that works for us and uh, you know Jesus is somebody that uh, is supposed to challenge us you know at, at every at every step of our lives you know that uh, that we can uh, be like him and uh, that's our joy and privilege last week we uh, celebrated the resurrection of Jesus Christ and uh, this week, you know, we, we begin to, again, it's, you know, to, to live lives that are devoted to him, uh, live our lives in him. And, uh, you know, I know we have some people over in Ukraine uh, that are uh, uh, tuning in with us. And uh, so I want to say, because this is uh, the, the day that the Orthodox Church uh, celebrates their Easter. So, Christos vos kres, vos you know, it's uh, Christ is risen, he's risen indeed. And so we're going to just pray and go right into a time of worship. And so uh, thank you for joining us uh, this morning. Father, we thank you uh, for your great love and for uh, just your mercy toward us uh, that uh, while we were yet sinners, uh, you know, Christ died for us. And, uh, but he didn't just die, he rose again. And because he lives, uh, we have the promise of, of eternal life. We have the promise of a new life here. And uh, Lord, we pray that you would just bless us as we worship you because you're the one who did all that for us. And uh, Lord, we pray uh, just be uh, glorified in our midst. Amen.
worship the Lord. we can all be together again. Amen. I have a new, a new song. Because you have set your love on me. And um, it's something uh, that the Lord might sing over us. And because uh, we know how much he loves us. And, uh, you know, if, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, mm -hmm. I will hear their prayer. you've set our love on me. Uh, I set your love on me. It's the name of the song. And so just uh, soak it in and, uh, and, and join us as, as we feel comfortable. Oh, oh, oh. 
midst of your trouble. In the midst of your trouble, I will be.
Hallelujah. Ah, Lord, that's our, our privilege and our joy is to exalt you, to exalt your name. And uh, Jesus, you did everything for us. Lord, you, you, you provided for our salvation. Your word says, let this attitude be in you. Uh, that was also in Christ Jesus. You know, Jesus, you had, you had heaven. But you came to earth, you became a man, you went to that cross for us. And we exalt you today, uh, Lord, because you are our Savior. You are God. And uh, Lord, we pray this morning uh, that uh, as you're uh, with everybody in their homes and with us here in this place, Ah, Lord, that you would bring about uh, a deliverance, Lord God, for, for those who, who call upon you. Uh, Lord, that, that you would bring this, uh, this virus that is just keeping us apart, and you bring it to, to an end. Uh, Lord, and, and we pray that you would just bless those that are uh, out there that are struggling with this virus. Uh, Lord, we, we pray for the, the workers that are out there uh, on the front lines. Lord, in, in so many different roles, first responders and uh, people in essential services, uh, the people in the, the hospitals and the medical settings, uh, Lord, we, we, we pray for them, for your protection to be upon them. Lord, that you would uh, strengthen them. Lord, there's no way to, to, for them not to be weary. But Lord, we pray that you would encourage them even in the midst of that weariness. And Lord, we think about uh, the people that are working in shops that, just to keep the food on the table. And uh, uh, Lord, we, we pray that for those that are struggling with their finances. And uh, Lord, we just pray for wisdom for our leaders. Uh, Lord, that they would know what to do. Lord, we pray for uh, no infighting, no bickering, uh, Lord. And, uh, and for people to be a bit more guarded in their words, Father, we pray, and that, uh, that we can all labor together in this thing, and uh, that we can see it uh, come to a quick end and that lives be saved. And Lord, we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So just uh, a, a few uh, prayer requests uh, that, 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 I, that came in, and uh, I'm going to bring my phone up here because if you have a prayer request and you want to uh, send it in while we're uh, taking this time to pray, you can do that. You can send it on, by text to my uh, cell phone number, which is 585-734-1857. Let me scan that to you guys. Okay. And uh, all right, let's see if we got anything coming in in particular. Nothing at this point. So, uh, And I had a little list here. Uh, so, uh, Deb Hattery, one of our own here, uh, she was uh, suffering with uh, uh, a problem with the right eye called uveitis, and uh, she, uh, we were praying for her. She uh, reports that uh, she's getting better, uh, still needs more prayer, still isn't reading out of that eye. Uh, so, Lord, we lift up Deb to you. Lord, we pray your blessing be upon her, uh, that you would encourage or strengthen her, Lord God, and restore her completely. And, uh, Lord, we pray for uh, Karen's mom, Norma, Lord, with skin cancer on the top of her head. Lord, we pray from the top of her head to the bottoms of her feet, Lord, that you would just bless her, heal her, and uh, protect her from this, Lord. And, uh, Lord, we pray for all the people that are in elder facilities. I think of Kurt's mom, my mom, and uh, uh, just, uh, you know, uh, Beth's mom. And there's, there's a, lot of, a lot of folks that are close to us. Uh, Edith Laird, she's, she's living in an apartment out there in the Buffalo area. And, uh, uh, Lord, uh, we, we pray for her. Lord, just in, encourage the folks but because they're so isolated. And, uh, Lord, we know how hard that isolation is. And so, Father, we pray. Uh, that your blessing be up upon all of them, and uh, that uh, we would find ways to be able to encourage them. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, no new prayer requests came in during that time, so. Okay. So, um, oh, that's right, okay. Uh, if you've noticed uh, that the, the background is a different color, uh, there is, uh, you know, one of the, our, our lead deacon, uh, uh, Kurt, uh, has uh, been, been working at all this, but he's been having trouble with which knee? Right knee, right knee okay. And anyways, uh, so anyways, we're going to lift him up in prayer, uh, just uh, that, uh, that God would bring healing to that knee. And uh, so, Father, we pray your blessing be upon uh, uh, Kurt, uh, Father, for the healing of that knee. And, uh, Lord, we agree together where two or three are gathered together in your name. There are you in the midst of us. And so, Lord, we know that even though we are few in number here this morning, uh, we pray that, uh, that you would just, you know, hear this prayer and uh, bring healing and, and relief to Kurt in Jesus' name. Amen. 
So uh, let's see here. Okay, I did get a, a prayer request here. Okay, from Chuck, uh, left side, major nerve pain all the way down. Oh, that's right. You know, I actually talked with them on the phone about this today. And I and what ha you have to understand, there's so much communication going on. I can lose things, you know, in the communication because it's multi-platform, email, text message, uh, you know, Facebook Messenger, and all these different things. And it's like, ah, you know, it kind of gets overwhelming at times. So we aren't forgetting to pray, but sometimes when we get to this moment where we got to bring it all together in one uh, single place, it gets a little tough. But Lord, we do lift up Chuck to you, and uh, Lord, uh, as he's laboring uh, with with open door and he's he's uh, uh, just uh, providing for his family. Lord, we pray that you would uh, just do something to to bring relief to this uh, nerve pain that's been going up and down. Uh, his arm, and Lord, they bring healing to him uh, through the blood of Jesus. And Lord, we pray this in Jesus' name, Amen. You know, and for those of you that wonder, you know, we actually are practicing uh, social distancing here. You know, just so uh, if you're not real familiar with this all and everything like that, you might not realize it. But the, the on one side of the platform, you have one couple that lives together. Okay, you got the other side of the platform, you got another couple lives together. In the middle, all by his lonesome, you got Doug. You know, and. Uh, I haven't been within six feet of any of these people, so, and just so you know, okay, my, my dutiful, wonderful wife, uh, you know, sold me one of these things, and frankly, if I need it, I am equipped, okay, so, all right, so I, I want to encourage you, you know, it's, uh, you know, I don't know how you feel about it all and everything like that, but you know, uh, you know, our leaders are asking us to, to, to cooperate, so I, I just, I, I tend to believe that it's a serious thing to tell a leader, nah. You know, I mean, it's like, that's not a good thing. You know, as Christians, we should be, you know, modeling that, uh, you know, that we can we can put a mask on. You know, I mean, uh, you know, you can agree or disagree and everything, and uh, that, that happens all the time, doesn't it? I'm sure people around the church sometimes disagree with me. That's okay. It doesn't mean we have to rebel against each other or, you know, cause a problem. But uh, anyways, simple enough thing. So I'm going to set my mask down here because I won't need it to preach to you. Uh, but uh, we're going to take our offering at this time. <laughs> So I'll ask the elders to come, right? The elders are, are here, but they're, they're, you know. So anyways, uh, but yeah, there's, uh, I sent out uh, some things to you, and they are on the screen. See that? Kurt's, man, he's getting on top of his game out back there. So yeah, uh, you can send uh, uh, by mail to the post office box, 282 Fairport 14450. Or you can uh, use uh, your online bill payer. You know, uh, if you've never tried using that, it's actually a kind of a cool service because you don't have to go to the post office. You don't have to buy stamps. You just uh, get on there, set that up, and they'll send those payments right out for you. Okay. And then uh, thirdly, we do have PayPal, and uh, you should have gotten an email uh, if you're if you attend the church. If you if you don't attend the church regularly and would like to give, uh, we're uh, pr we've separated out our our. our uh, mailing list uh, so that we only send requests for offerings to uh, people that, that that normally attend the church okay but if you're thinking hey I'd like to give you know well <laughs> we're not going to tell you no okay so just uh, so so but if you need more information you can email me at Donald Bolt d-o-n-a-l-d b-o-l-d-t uh, at gmail.com and uh, I'll send you whatever information you need uh, so, and, and in addition to the Sunday morning services, uh, we are live streaming Bible study on Wednesday night at 7 p.m. I've been doing some Zoom corners. They have not, we, we've not gotten overwhelmed on those, but people show up, and it's an opportunity to talk with each other, see each other's faces animated and everything, and uh, breaks up the day. And uh, so I'm going to just encourage you, uh, if you would like to be a part of that, uh, and, and if you're not getting messages inviting you to that, again, Send me an email, send me a text, and I'll be glad to get you on, on those lists that receive those uh, notifications. So let's see. I think we've pretty much there, – there's, there's no announcements of activities because we're not able to do those at this time. Uh, so, um, yeah, let's see. What else? I guess that's it. I, you know, why don't we dive into God's Word and, uh, and spend some time with, with, with Him? And uh, so this is my prayer reminder for the end of the service here. Let me just check real quick to make sure there aren't some others. Uh, no, okay, that was our um, prayer request then, okay. So, yeah, this morning, you know, coming, coming off of Resurrection Sunday, it's hard. <laughs> you know, I'm seeking the Lord saying, God, you got to give me a word for, for today because, uh, you know, it's, it, what, what isn't kind of a, you know, <laughs> a slight down the hill from, from, from there when, you, when you're celebrating the resurrection of our Lord? But, uh, but, you know, God's word is filled with treasure for us. And, you know, I, we're living in difficult times. I, six weeks ago, eight weeks ago, who could have imagined this? If I would have said, we're going to have a pandemic and uh, you're not going to be able to go to the store or the bank without wearing a mask, you would have said, 
<laughs> okay? Uh, and look at where we are, all right? And, and so we're, we're living in hard times. And, you know, it's, uh, uh, there was a, a friend of mine put a post up, and I'm not sure if he's reposting something that somebody else wrote, but he said, we're not in the same boat. We're in the same storm, <laughs> okay? We're all in the same storm, but we are not in the same boat. We are all in very different situations. I mean, I know people who are in pain because they're so alone. I know people that are in pain because they're so overwhelmed with a house full of people, okay? Uh, I know people that are, that are, that are working uh, and themselves to the bone. I know people that haven't been able to go to work for, for weeks and uh, you know, are, are struggling because of that. So, but if, if I could give you a little bit of advice from, from, from God, follow Jesus. All right, you know, I mean, seek him, seek the Lord uh, and, and follow him. And so a lot of what we're going to talk about this morning is just that. You know, you know what does it mean to be a Christian? You know, you know this, this Jesus that rose from the dead, what does it mean to be a follower of his? And um, so are you adjusting my sound levels here? Are we? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's yeah, good. Feedback. Yeah, all right, okay. That's, that's feedback. That, that's, how, that's how we find out, you know. So, uh, all right, so I'm going to start with Acts 11.26. For an entire year they met with the church... And uh, they taught considerable numbers, and the disciples were first called Christians at Antioch. Now, I've heard a lot of different teaching on, you know, that, that word Christian. That maybe, maybe it was, a, a, you know, an insult or something like that, calling them little Christs and that sort of thing. But, you know, I, I, I did a little bit of research on it. it. That's doubtful. You know, if they wanted to call you something bad, they say, you know, you're part of the sect of the Nazarene or something like that. That they, that they believed in, in the Messiah was not a problem. <clears throat> All the Jewish people around them believed in the Messiah, and various, even other people outside of there uh, had different ideas about a Messiah coming. Uh, so th that probably wouldn't have been the insult, all right? But that they were looking at them and recognizing, and this was a, a bit of a different thing, that they were endeavoring to be like this Jesus. They were trying to be like this one that they called Christ, and so they called them Christians, all right, so John 13, 34 through 35, uh, Jesus said this. He said, a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another even as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this will all know, all men will know that you are my disciples if you have loved one for another. All right, well, let's, let's take a moment with that. All right, th wh why was it a new commandment? Well, because prior to that, he'd said that there was two commandments uh, in, in the, the Old Covenant that... Uh, that summed up the whole law and the prophets. And that was love God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and love your neighbor as, as yourself. <clears throat> Jesus just kicked it up a notch. All right, he said, if you, want, if you want people to know that you're my disciples, love other people like I've loved you. Uh, it, it, does it say love other Christians like I've loved you? No, it does not. Okay, now, you know, the Christians are included in this, but... Let's love one another. Wait a minute. So, see me. Wait a minute. You trying to tell me that if I got unsaved people around me and uh, you know I'm supposed to love them just like, like Jesus loved me? Yep. Okay. It's called evangelism. <laughs> okay. Uh, when you love somebody that's already a believer, well, that's isn't that a joyous thing? It's, it's wonderful to get together with other believers and share that love. But for a person that doesn't really know Jesus yet, maybe heard about Jesus, doesn't believe yet, to experience the love of Jesus coming from you to them. Uh, you know, you don't, you don't need a whole lot of tracts and, uh, and, 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 and preaching, you know, to get through to a person that's experiencing the love of Jesus Christ through you. And so there's, there's another potential short circuit that can occur here, all right? And, and it happens often, all right, which is, that, oh, you are such a special person. Oh, you are just such a wonderful one. We had neighbors uh, that um, at some point became a little utopian and wanted to create their own little utopia somewhere, and they decided... The, the ideal state to live on, live in, I think, was Vermont. Okay, and uh, they found the ideal city in Vermont to live in. Okay, they found the ideal home in that city to live in. Uh, they'd found ideal jobs there, but they said it wouldn't be ideal unless we can take you with us. <laughs> and I said, "Well, you have to understand something. You seem overly impressed with us, but please understand what you're impressed with isn't us." It's, you're, you're impressed with what you, you see Jesus in us. You may not necessarily have figured that part out yet, but what you're seeing in me that, that you find so attractive, um, they became Christians, by the way, after a while, but you know, it, it, was, it was a bit of doing, you know, because, uh, you know, well, I'm not going to go into all the detail, but it's just it's not the message. But by this, everybody's going to know that you're disciples of Jesus if you have love for one another, all right? Okay, so again, this, this you know, how do we practice this? And, um, 
you know, we can be a little crafty to our own demise here, um, which is sometimes we, tr we imagine Jesus or we read uh, the scriptures and we, we try to kind of smooth it down into a version of Jesus that would be easy for me to fit into, you know, a nice fit. I remember I used to work at a shoe store. Okay, it was, called, it was, a, it was actually a, a clothing store called The Sample Shop, but I worked in the shoe department. But it was an upscale shop out in the Buffalo area. And anyways, um, and people would come in to buy shoes, and we had boot stretchers, you know, the shoe stretchers, okay? And what they were was a set of tools that you could use to stretch those shoes to fit people. All right, so somebody comes in, they got a little bunion on one side. Well, just a moment, I'll take that out back and fix that. Right. Boom, 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 boom. And you, you could stretch the shoe to fit around any foot, all right? You, you know, and so a little, you know, it's a little tight in there. We could stretch it, you know, we could. That's not how we're supposed to relate to Jesus, okay? We're not supposed to try to make him fit us. All right, if anything, uh, you know, the life of a Christian is about seeing Jesus and really deeply desiring to be like him. All right, and so the scripture we talked about a couple weeks ago, maybe last week or maybe the week before, it's in 2 Corinthians 13, 5. I won't do the whole context and everything, but test yourselves to see if you're in the faith. All right, if you're in the faith, examine yourselves. You know, that's a good thing. Now, we can get overly involved in that and all kinds of introspection and everything, but really all I'm suggesting here is that from time to time it's good for us to take a look at the standard, take a look, you know, we get that from the Word of God, from the work of the Holy Spirit, uh, and and to just say, you know, well, how am I doing? You know, and ask the Lord. The Lord will show you, you know, how am I doing? Um, you know, I don't know if you have those times, but uh, you know, I remember having a conversation with somebody that I was a leader to and explaining to them they really needed to work harder on some particular area of their life. Of course, the next day, if you've ever been in leadership, you know this, right? Okay, the same challenge came to me, all right, which was there's, you know, the situation where, you know, I was challenged to, to do the very thing I'd, I'd asked that person that I was leading, all right? And so, yeah, yeah, so when I'm, I'm not talking about, you know, morbidity and getting into the, oh, you know, how awful I am. No, but just being honest about where you stand uh, in your relationship with Jesus Christ and how you're living that out, all right? And it, cause, and he goes on and encourages, don't you, don't you recognize this about yourselves, that Jesus Christ is in you, all right? That that's, that's the, the joy for the, for the Christian is that, that Jesus is alive in me by the working of his Holy Spirit, and I have the opportunity to do things that, apart from that, I would not be able to do. It's abiding in that vine, you know, and through which, you know, the strength comes that, that makes me alive. And, uh, uh, you know, I was talking with uh, Margie Stevens. Uh, she uh, wrote this book on message from the trees that's, uh, you know, just kind of getting marketed out right now. And uh, you were just talking about that, that whole thing about abiding uh, in, in the vine and what that means, about how the strength comes to that. In fact, we, we shared uh, on, on Facebook, uh, she, she put out a, a video teaching uh, relating to that, and so we put that out there. So in Acts 14, 21 through 22, after they had preached the gospel in that city and made disciples, okay, they returned to Lystra and to Iconium and to Antioch, strengthening the souls of the disciples, encouraging them to continue in the faith and saying, through many tribulations, we must enter the kingdom of God. All right? Tribulations, uh, nobody likes them. You know, I'm not suggesting that we ever get to the place where we, you know, in everything, give thanks, not for everything, okay? Uh, there, there's some things that, you know, I, I, it's not, I'm, I'm not rejoicing because I'm hurting. I'm rejoicing because I have the Lord in the midst of that hurt, all right? And so he says, look, the, the, a lot of these, you're going to go through tribulation. You're going to go through great difficulty, all right? And uh, stay, stay in the faith, continue in the faith. That word continue is actually a very important New Testament word. It means to abide faithfully. You know, it means to stay, stay, don't go, don't go away, don't drift, all right? So, so to continue in the faith. Uh, in fact, you know, if you're trying to understand church membership, uh, there's two parts to it. One was they joined. They joined the, or associated themselves with, they had joined uh, themselves to uh, the disciples, all right? And there's a, a time in the, in the uh, book of Acts where uh, a lot was going on, you know? Uh, miracles were being done, uh, opposition was coming against them, and it said many believed, but none dare join them, okay? But to join, you know, join is a big deal. You know, the, to, to say, look, you know, I'm going to join this, this group of, of Christians and I'm going to be a part of this and I'm going to be faithful to my relationships here was joining. But then the, this very important thing was, did you continue? Did you abide faithfully in that, uh, that set of relationships that, that God has brought you into, a relationship with him, relationship with the, the believers around you? 1 Corinthians 16, 13. Uh, be on alert. Stand firm in the faith. Okay, sorry for the generation here, but act like men and be strong, all right? Uh, 
you have to understand some of these letters were being written to the elders of the city that were men, and so you know it's not saying that the women didn't have to be strong. Or there's not a strength that's like a woman. It's just you know there's there's, there's other scriptures, but he just says, look, um, you're in a fight. Okay, be on alert. Uh, I, I would say probably nowadays we're probably a little more on alert. You know, we're, we're much more alert to things. Uh, you know, went out for a, a, a bike ride on the on the canal path, and uh, I, I just sensed this this like a, a bit of tension out there. There was just you know these people are so on alert, kind of watching what's going around. Are you getting too close to me and that sort of thing, and so people are much more on alert. Well, I don't know that that kind of nervous uh, you know fearful alertness is what it's talking about here, but just keep your eyes open. All right, because you know you're walking in faith, and I tell you what, there's two things that I want us to, to remember here. One is uh, that there are some threats. All right, there are some threats to our faith. There are some threats to us. Okay, but perhaps more importantly for for today's message is this: uh, that there are opportunities. There are opportunities. Because, you know, I, I, I got in the habit of asking people if they would permit me to pray for them. And I probably over the years had a couple people say, no, I don't want you to. All right. I don't think anybody's turned down prayer today. Um, you know, so, I mean, there's opportunities. There's opportunities to do all kinds of, of, of things in ministry. You know, who would have ever thought that you could uh, be a witness by sharing a roll of toilet paper? <laughs> you know, but nowadays, you know, I mean, that's almost like a housewarming gift. All right. So, I mean, it's just... In the midst of scarcity, if you happen to have a bit of supply, you know, to share those things, I mean, there's, there's opportunities all around. So be alert. Stand firm in the faith. Don't get so consumed with fighting off uh, COVID-19 that you forget that, you know, the, the real fight that we're in is, is, is to live for Jesus and to, to be witnesses. So what was Jesus like? All right. If you walked with him, how would you describe him? So let's go to the people who walked with him and see how they described him. All right, so uh, John 13, 5 through 8, uh, he poured water in a basin, and he began to wash the disciples' feet and wipe them with the towel with which he was girded. Humble service. That's Jesus. Um, you know, I think about the times where, <clears throat> you know, he was being insulted. You know, he's on his way to heal this, this, this girl that they thought was dead, and, and people are insulting him, you know, laughing at him, scorning him. And yet he continued and kept going and, and served, all right? Can you imagine this for a moment? You know, that you're, you, this person you've come to know as the Christ, as the, the Messiah. And um, we sit down to what you know is a very important meal culturally, uh, religiously, uh, but even more important because it is the Last Supper. You don't know that yet exactly. You're, you're, you're trying to figure all this out, but you, you sense somehow this is a, a, a really significant, perhaps, turning point in your relationship with Jesus. And he steps aside from his place of honor at the table, <clears throat> goes and fills a basin with water. You're thinking, what's he doing? <laughs> you know, you're not immediately thinking, oh, no, he's not going to wash our feet, is he? You know, nobody's thinking this. Nobody, nobody can imagine uh, this miracle worker. Okay, what is that? Uh, you know, let's see, uh, the song. Uh, Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. Okay, they knew him as this. Okay, nobody can imagine him at, at this dinner where, I mean, it's pretty hard to avoid him being the guest of honor. And the guest of honor steps up from the table, goes over, starts filling a basin. You're wondering what he's doing. Then you see him get the towel. And you're hoping, no, he's not going to. And then he girds himself. He takes that towel, wraps it around his waist, and you, you start to understand what's happening here. <clears throat> and so, so he came to Simon Peter and said to him, uh, and, and, and Peter says to him, Lord, do you wash my feet? And he calls him Kurios, Lord, you know, my, you know, my master, you know, do you, do you wash my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, what I, what I do, you, uh, you do not realize now, but you will understand hereafter. Peter said to him, never shall you wash my feet. All right. That's not an unusual reaction to this. All right, nowadays as Christians, we're sort of familiar with this passage of Scripture, so we sort of get the, the thing that's going on. Sometimes leaders will take that place of humble service to us, and uh, it, it's, it's real, but it's also a way of impacting our lives. All right, and so um, and Jesus answered him, if, you, if I do not wash you, you have no part with me. Okay, so how important do you think uh, understanding that one of the things we're supposed to learn from Jesus is humble service, you know? 
Uh, I remember, again, teen challenge story here, uh, but uh, there was a guy who came into the program, and uh, now he'd gotten through the program successfully, and, uh, and now he's reflecting back, and he says, you know, when I first came in here, I was trying to figure out what your angle was, because I, I just believe everybody has an angle. And uh, I couldn't figure out what your angle was, but I figured, I think what he does, he takes people in off the street, uh, fattens them up, teaches them to be obedient, and, obedient, and then sells them off to work camps. <laughs> I was just thinking, oh, my goodness, I would have never thought he would have thought such a thing. He said, but, you know, his brother Don, he says, you know, the, the day that, that, that I, I just realized I have no idea what your angle is, he says, I came over to the house, and you were upstairs in the bathroom covered in plaster dust uh, and just doity, man. He just, you know, he's down the city, doity. He says, you know, just, 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 just dust all over you, and, you know, it's in your eyes and everything, and I thought, why would this man, you know, be in our bathroom, you know, trying to make it nicer for us, you know? And so it's a place of humble service. You know, there's, there's, there's a guy, uh, his name's Kazim, and uh, he, his family came from Afghanistan, all right? And so, you know, he, uh, we sponsored them, and uh, uh, they were com coming from a, a Muslim family over there, and they came, and we sponsored them into America, and... Um, and I remember at some point, uh, their washer and dryer quit. And so anyway, so uh, he called me, and he said, you know, this, this happened, because he told me, if you have a need, you call us. And I said, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll get you another washer and dryer. So later that night, I pull up outside of his house, with the truck, with a washer and dryer in the back of it. I said, come on, get the young guys, let's go. Because all, because all the men folk and their family, the older ones, had all, all been killed over in Afghanistan. So he, he's like 17 years old. He's the head of the household here. So he and, and I and maybe one other kid, uh, you know, we start dragging this out. And he's watching as this person that he thinks of as a spiritual leader, so this kind of lifted up one. And <laughs> we're dragging this thing down the basement stairs and, uh, you know, and installing everything like that. I know that impacted him, you know, that place of humble service. Because you know what? Jesus was like that. It's very important. In fact, he says, if you don't receive this from me, you have no part with me. Holiness. Okay, 1 Peter 1.15. Be, it says, like the Holy One who called you, be holy yourselves also in all your behavior. Because it is written, you shall be holy for I am holy. I will go so far as to say this, to even understand what holiness is is a challenge, okay? Because we tend to think, oh, that's good behavior. Well, holiness produces good behavior, but holiness is not good behavior in its, of itself. You know, holiness is, uh, is, 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 oh boy, I, I, there's words to explain this. It's this like purity, this, this cleanness of, 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 of just what's in you uh, that, that means that what you produce is righteous. You know, holiness produces righteousness, but righteousness is a different thing. We'll talk about that in a minute because Jesus is also righteous. But this being, uh, you know, not divided, being not, uh, you know, no shadow of turning. It's just, you know, all these kind of things. But even to grasp, you know, what holiness is, you spend a lifetime really understanding it. Uh, you know, I came, I was, you know, my, my early years as a Christian, I mean, I was being mentored by people who were part of the Pentecostal holiness movement. Now, the people I was with were part of a very healthy part of that, where they just really encourage you that, you know, your innards, you know, what, what's in you, you know, it, it really needs to belong completely to the Lord. And, uh, you know, and, and then the evidence of that should be that your behavior would, would indicate that, you know, that your insides were good. And so, yeah, so holiness, you know, Jesus was holy. All right, he is holy. So when I say was, I'm merely referring to the fact that we are looking back in history. Okay, it's not uh, Jesus is. That was one of the things when I when I was uh, uh, looking for Jesus, uh, I I met some Jesus freaks. You know, I don't know if you know what they were. They were hippies uh, that that uh, had all all the appearance of a hippie, except they used to be wearing a big cross around their neck or something like that, and 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 they talked about Jesus. It was the first time I'd ever seen somebody smile when they said Jesus, you know, and it was like, and, and so they, they were some of the people that also had an impact on me, on me before I became a Christian. And uh, anyways, and they had this big sign that Jesus is. And I said, Jesus is what? He said, no, he is, you know, and I said, oh, okay. <laughs> so, you know, and so he's righteous. First John 3, 7, little children, that's what John used to call the people he was uh, discipling and mentoring, make sure no one deceives you. Right. I've had people approach me 
uh, who have no idea about our church or me or anything like that, just sometimes people get yapping real quick and everything like that and say, well, you know, and they're complaining about the church and about how the church doesn't preach the word of God anymore. You know, let me tell you something. You know, uh, I, do, I have no desire to deceive you in any way. And if you, if you ever look at the notes for the messages, okay, just, you know, it's like two pages of scriptures. We're just reading them and, and, and trying to understand what they mean. That's all. We're just trying to be, there's no deception. You know, it says, uh, let, make sure no one deceives you. The one who practices righteousness is righteous, just as he is right. Is he is righteous, okay? Um, we'll never attain that in ourselves. All right, when it comes to that kind of being complete and being completely righteous, getting to the place where you can actually say, well, really don't need Jesus because I got this thing figured out, we're never going to hit that place. You're always going to need the righteousness of Jesus. It's that he dwells in me. That's I have his righteousness, okay? I've got the Holy Spirit uh, dwelling in me, and the Holy Spirit dwelling in me, well, what does that mean? It means that uh, that, that, that righteousness uh, is, is being communicated in, in me all the time, all right? It's there to convict me of, of sin, of righteousness and judgments. Uh, a simple teaching on that just to, be, just to keep it straight. Okay, he tells me when I'm wrong, he tells me when I'm right, and he reminds me that there's a day coming where the difference is going to make a big deal. All right? It's, uh, you know, it's sin, righteousness, and justice. There's, there's a lot more that can be taught about that, but just a, a simple understanding of that. So practicing righteousness, all right? Anybody here ever practice an, an instrument or practice uh, shooting foul shots? You know, you don't always hit it right. You know, sometimes you get a sour note, but practicing it, you know, is that your practice? Is that, is that what you're about? I mean, I've known some awfully good people in my life, and sometimes I've seen them at their worst moments, all right? And, and I don't judge them based on their worst moment. You know, I understand that it was the practice of their life to, to, to live this way, and uh, those times that they missed it is not my concern, but do you, do you practice? You know, is that your practice? What are your practices, you know? I, I mean, if somebody said, well, you know, in your faith, what do you practice? You know, would you have an answer? You should have an answer, okay? You could answer with some of this. Purity, okay? Jesus was pure, all right? You never had to wonder what his motives were. You never had to wonder if he was, you know, maybe being drawn away. Um, he was tempted in all points like as we are, but without sin. And First uh, John, again, chapter 3, love that chapter, all right? And, every, and everyone who has this hope for salvation fixed... Uh, on him purifies himself uh, just as he is pure, okay? And so he's righteous, he's, he's pure, all right? And uh, pure, unadulterated. Um, there's this thing about integrity, you know? I, I remember the first time, uh, there, uh, I should sell, there was a man that worked with my parents, and anyways, he had no children, all right? And so when Easter time would come, he would always send Easter candy to us, and he would always send us these very impressive uh, chocolate bunnies, you know, solid chocolate bunnies that are about this tall. And anyways, and man, it was just, we were so grateful. We, I, I think we probably met him once. Uh, we, we were, of course, dutifully, we sent him a thank you note every time he, he did that. And one year shows up this, like, 30-inch tall, 24-inch, 30-inch tall, huge to me, in, in a box, you know, with a cellophane on it so you could see what was in there. Chocolate rabbit, it's like this tall, all right? My jaw dropped. And anyways, and so the first time I bit into it, I found out it was hollow. Because I'm a little kid, I, I, don't know, I don't know these things yet, okay? When you see a huge rabbit, it's got to be hollow, right? And I remember that disappointment. Now, I wasn't disappointed when the gift that the guy gave me, but I thought, oh, I thought this was solid. And, and to find out it wasn't, all right? And see, purity is about this, this integrity that says, you know, when you get past the surface, it's more of the same. See, and that's, that's, that's the, the wonderful thing about purity and why it's important for us to be pure. You know, when, when we push past that, when we push past the surface, what you want us to see, you know, look, I, I went to the closet, I picked out a shirt, you know, I have more than one, all right? And so anyway, so I, I went and I, and I picked out, I thought, well, I think that's the shirt I should wear today, all right? Because I wanted to look this way for you, all right? And then I went and I picked out the vest, and the vest needed to be adjusted. And, I, you know, and, and, and it is, that's just the candy coating. It's like the M&M, but what's inside, all right? All right, all right so, um, but it's, you know, but then there are things about me that, that if not, it's not the shell, okay? It's, it's who I am. And when you keep coming back to me again and again over the years, do you find the same maybe only better? You know, or, or, or do you get disappointed feeling like, no, oh, man, I, I always thought you were this way. Now I understand you're really not, you know. That's a, isn't that a hard challenge and as, as you get older? You know, it, 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 we're so aware of our failings. 
aren't we? You know, and uh, times when you thought you were doing pretty good, you know, and then somebody points out, you know, a place where you're tripping up, you know. So I mean, but, but purity is not something you say, got the purity thing down, you know. Uh, no, I mean, it's it's something that we just we, we desire because we desire to be like Him. So love, ah, my, one of my favorite scriptures, uh, Ephesians five one and two. Therefore, be imitators of God as beloved children, as dear children, right? And uh, walk in love, just as Christ also loved you and gave himself up for us as an offering and a sacrifice uh, to God as a fragrant aroma, okay? Love, you know, it can be that warm, gushy kind of hug your grandchildren sort of thing, although we're not hugging a lot of grandchildren just now. Uh, you know, it can be that... Uh, you know, kind of sweet, uh, almost sappy kind of thing that's so wonderful that we, we enjoy so much. But tell you what, Jesus, his love, he gave himself for us, right? You know, that, that one where it says, husbands love your wives as Christ loved the church, and we kind of breeze by it. I says, can I point out that Jesus loved the church on a cross? Okay, <laughs> okay, that uh, love is not always a gushy, mushy kind of thing, but love, uh, you know, if that's the one he said. If you, if you have this love for one another, People are going to be sure you're my disciples, all right? And so forbearance and forgiveness, here we go. We're, we're living in tight spaces. I was talking to somebody, and uh, we're, uh, they, they were from a Mediterranean background, all right? And, and they're finding themselves li living in very Germanic situation, all right? I don't know if you know this, but there are indoor and outdoor cultures. And uh, forbearance and forgiveness become highly important, uh, you know, in, in when you get into close quarters, which is where we're at right now, right? So if you're used to being outside and being loud and, you know, and hanging out with all kinds of people, and if you get a bad situation, you're going to walk away and just kind of go over there and everything, and all of a sudden you're within these four walls <laughs> with each other. Uh, this little teaching on forbearance, in other words, not getting offended all the time with everything, all right, and forgiveness, you know, forgiving when you do get offended, um, is important. Colossians three thirteen says, "Bearing one another, bearing with one another, and forgiving one another." Uh, okay, so um, there is that point where you know there's a lot of reasons for this, but okay, one is because I understand I'm not perfect either, so I don't expect perfection from others. All right. Another one is is that you know hopefully I can play the role if, if you're if you are the older Christian, if you're the young Christian, we're supposed to you're the one who's supposed to be bearing with a little bit extra. You know, you make mistakes or things like that. But, uh, you know, playing the role of the elder uh, child in the family that you have to bear with, all right? And bear with one another. You know, be gentle with each other. You know, uh, back down a little bit, okay? Bearing with one another and forgiving each other, forgiving, giving up the right to hold something against somebody, giving up the right to punish them in any way for the thing that, that they offended you with. It says, whoever has a complaint against anyone, just as the Lord forgave you, so also should you, all right? We all have a large bill with Jesus, all right? You know that you owe me one? <laughs> I owe more than one. <clears throat> okay, he forgave all my sins, all right? He went to the cross that all of my sins, past, present, and future, are covered by his blood, and I am forgiven. And basically saying, look, uh, if you have a hard time forgiving somebody, remember that I forgave you, and for my sake, forgive them, all right? So recognize, you know, how forgiven you are. It, it helps you in forgiving others and being forbearing. Compassion. Ah, yes. Ephesians 4.32, scripture we taught all of our children. We homeschooled them and we lived in close quarters and you really had to, you know, focus on this particular scripture. Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving each other just as uh, God in Christ also has forgiven you. Of course, we did Bolt's translation on that because I want it nice and clean and clear what it was talking about. Let's see. Uh, be kind to one another, tender-hearted, uh, forgiving one another just as, as, as God has forgiven you because of Jesus Christ. All right. So anyways, uh, again, it's, it's, it's again, this thing about forgiveness is being expressed now as compassion, uh, this ability to, you know, put yourself in the other person's place and understand that, you know, for this to work, we both have to be at the place where we're, we're working at loving each other, being kind, you know, kindness. By the way, kindness is not natural on this planet. All right. And it's a it's it's a wonderful thing to work at. Tender heartedness, you know, being where you love easy. You know, it's, it's not hard for you to love people. You're tender-hearted. Um, you know, and, and again, it's forgiving. But endurance. 
Okay, where would we be without endurance? There's a there's a book uh, called The Endurance. It was the name of a ship that got stuck in the ice down in Antarctica, and uh, the, 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 there's a book out there. Uh, Shackleton, I think, was the name of the guy who had, had the, this. He, they went down to Antarctica to do some exploring, and their ship got stuck in the ice and pretty well crushed. Where it was, they couldn't get out of there. They ended up living, I believe, for two years in Antarctica. All right. And by the way, in Antarctica, there are, there are things under the water that hunt you. <laughs> okay. So, I mean, uh, and the idea is you eat them before they eat you. All right. So this is, and, and so they were there for two years. There are no vegetables available in, uh, in, in Antarctica uh, that they were aware of anyway. So they ate meat for, uh, uh, you know, a couple of years. By the way, everybody survived. One person had some frostbitten toes, but other than that, everybody survived. They all endured. All right. So the name of the ship was Apropos. All right, Hebrews 12, 1 through 3, Therefore, since we have so great a cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let us lay aside every encumbrance and the sin which so easily entangles us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Okay, we have a race that's set before us. We are, we, I would say we're kind of in a, a weedy portion of, of that race. Okay, I ran cross country, and there were places uh, along the way that uh, really took endurance because the ground was difficult, to, uneven to, to run on, and, and, you, and just, you just you had to keep your eye on, on the finish line. You had to keep, even though if you couldn't see the finish line from where you were, because that's how cross country is, you know. And uh, so anyways, you'd, you'd run and, and you'd endure. And it, I always say it was a love-hate relationship because it, it was such a painful sport, <laughs> okay? But you loved it because it's just, I don't know, completing those races was, was such a great thing. And so, you know, you just kept coming. At the end of the season, we'd all say, man, I'm not coming. I'm not doing this next year. Next year, I'll be back, you know? <laughs> <laughs> right? Cross country runners, am I wrong? Okay, so anyways, love them endorphins, you know? So anyways, but fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of faith. Fixing your eyes on Jesus, all right? In, in American culture, you're only allowed to look at somebody for so long before it's considered impolite, all right? But we are allowed to look at each other, which is kind of a fun thing, you know? You can people watch a little here and there. Uh, but Here's one who just says, look, would you just get your eyes on me and don't take them off, please? All right, and that's Jesus. Fixing our eyes on Jesus, who is the author. He's, he's, the, he's the person who gave us our faith in the first place. He's, the, he's the, the beginner, the progenitor. He's the person who created this faith and gave it to us, and also the perfecter, the one who brings it to completion in us to understand that I, I'm not doing this by my own strength. Uh, as a cross-country runner, you're constantly looking inward to find the strength that you needed. Uh, in this, we look to Jesus to find the strength. For who for the joy set before him, okay, now he's going to talk about his race, all right, the joy set before him, he endured the cross. You know, I don't know what cross you may be enduring right now, all right, but uh, Jesus endured the cross, despising the shame, and he is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him, consider him. You know, you ever feel like I wish people would consider me? <laughs> okay, I think we all go through that, I do. Maybe it's just me. I'm just, I mean, I mean y'all are better than me, maybe. I don't know. But, but, you know, that thing where we kind of get in, oh, poor me, and just, I wish people would be more considerate of me, and blah, 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 blah. Well, but it's saying the, the key for, to endurance isn't consider, consider me. The key to endurance is consider him. Okay? He endured. He endured such hostility by sinners against himself so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Don't lose heart. You know, that's, that's, a, that's a challenge, isn't it? Those times you feel like giving up, you feel like just this, this is too much, you know, but don't lose heart. You know, you know it's just we're, we're going to get through this. Submission. He is Lord. You call me Lord. You're right, okay? If I, your Lord and Savior, have washed your feet, right? Okay, so uh, Peter, you might remember, was the one who had his feet washed. For what credit is there if when you sin and are harshly treated, you endure it with patience? Okay, so he's saying, you know, you, you do something wrong. He's thinking back to those thieves on the cross. You know, and if you're treated harshly for it, so what? But, but, oh no, please, like, can we take this out of the Bible? Can we just, no, let's not, that really, does this scripture really need to be in here? Yes, it does, okay? But if, when you do what is right and suffer for it, whew, book of Job's a tough book, isn't it? All right. But if you do what's right and you suffer for it, but wait a minute, I did all the right things, and look what happened to me, all right? Doing everything that's right is, is not a protection that says you're never going to suffer for doing the right thing. Sometimes we suffer for doing the right thing. He says, but if, you, if, if, if when you do what is right and suffer for it, you patiently endure it, right? Without grumbling, without 
complain and you just endure it. This finds favor with God. All right, can I please help you to understand something? If you're in the midst of a difficult circumstance and you are patiently enduring it, all right, and you're just doing your best to avoid getting down into the, in that place where you're full of grumbling and complaining, all right, I want you to understand something. The favor of God rests on you. All right? The favor of God is not expressed in that moment in a warm, gushy feeling, all right? but it's an awareness that what he said when he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you, he meant I will be with you even in the most difficult times in your life. The favor of God rests on you. For you have been called for this purpose. Since Christ suffered for you, leaving you an example for you to follow in his steps, who committed no sin, nor was any deceit found in his mouth, and while being reviled, he did not revile in return. While suffering, he uttered no threats. Can, can we just stop for a moment and understand the kind of threats that Jesus could, 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 could muster? You know? You will spend eternity in hell for what you're doing. You know? Uh, you know, the judgment of God is going to fall on this city, and you won't be able to find evidence that it was here <laughs> because no stone will be left on top of another. You know, Jesus could mount some pretty good threats. You know, I can call my father. He'd release angels and wipe all you out. Okay, I mean, so yeah, this, this is, I mean, you and I, what threats can we come up with? You know, I don't know, I'm going to spit on you or something. I mean, but it's Jesus could come up with some mighty, mighty fine threats. And then it says, you know, when he's being mistreated like this, he didn't utter any threats but kept entrusting himself to him, meaning God, his Father, who judges righteously. You know, the thing I, I, I train my children, I train my grandchildren in this. If somebody's doing wrong to you, don't do wrong back, because if you do wrong back, God has a hard time deciding what to do with who. All right, but if, you, if, if, if when something's being done wrong to you, you refuse to get caught up in that and do wrong back, God's going to come down and make a difference at some point. He's going to make a difference. I don't know if it's going to happen in your life or when you're with him, but there'll come a day when you reflect back on that time where you didn't respond evil for evil and understand the favor of God was on me in that time. And you know what? I, I committed myself to you because I, 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 I know whom uh, I have believed in, and I'm persuaded he's able to keep those things which I've committed unto him against that day. That, 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 that day comes when, we're, when we appear before him, and all this comes back. It all comes back. All right, so you got to get an eternal perspective to get all of this. Jesus was humble, and he was obedient uh, in that, that, that humility. And uh, we already mentioned the scripture, but I'm going to mention again, Philippians 2, 12 through 15. So then, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed, in, not as in my presence only, but now even more, much more in my absence, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. This comes right after this, this part where he talks about let this mind be in you or this attitude be in you that was in Christ Jesus. And he goes on to say this. He's work out your salvation with fear and trembling. And understand the, 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 the power of this gift. All right? And so, for it is God who is working you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Do all things without grumbling or disputing so that you'll prove yourselves blameless and innocent, children of God above reproach. That does not mean people aren't going to try to reproach you. But when the reproaches don't stick because they aren't true, you are in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among whom you appear as lights in the world. You are the light of the, the world, right? Okay, you appear as lights in the world. Right? Uh, if we allow ourselves to reform Jesus into something easier, something that fits a little more with the culture and everything, uh, maybe not so much. Kindness. Jesus taught us to love our enemies. I remember that in the steel plant, and there was a guy who had made himself my enemy in no uncertain way. I mean, he, you know, he really made himself my enemy. People in the plant came up to me and said, look, you know, next time he does that, deck him. We'll say he swung first. <laughs> That's how bad it was, okay? I mean, I, I, I had the unsaved trying to be merciful to me, a Christian, by saying, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll help you deal with this. All right, and I and when I went looking for answers, this was one of the scriptures that I, I you know I didn't know what to do. I was a young Christian, popped my Bible and like this, and this is one of the scriptures I looked at. Love your enemies, do and do good, lend, expecting nothing in return, and your reward will be great, and you'll be sons of the Most High, for He Himself is kind to ungrateful and evil men. Again, this idea that sometimes we have that you know, <laughs> Billy Graham has would have had no trouble finding a place to stay when he came to Rochester. Okay, Franklin Graham the same. Uh, you know, just you know. Uh, the big, nobody has, 
it's it's the least. It's 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 the, it's the tough ones. Those are the ones that, that we, you know where where God you know gets gets lifted up and glorified when we're, when we're kind to people that don't deserve kindness. Oh wait a minute, that's like me and you, right? Okay, God is kind to us even when we don't deserve it. Okay. Jesus was a generous giver. Now, lest you think I'm putting the arm on you for a bigger offering, um, giving in church is, is, is a big thing. It really is. I mean, we should be faithful to that because, you know, God, God calls us to such things and is pleased with it. But what I'm talking about here is, is a different kind of giving. All right? So let's say Proverbs 19, 17. One who is gracious to a poor man lends to the Lord, and he, meaning God, will repay him for his good deed. You know, it's times where, uh, you know, occasionally people hit me up for, you know, lunch money or something like that. I, I usually try to make sure they actually spend it on lunch. But if I can't, yeah. So he said, how do you know he didn't just, you know, rip you up? How do you know he didn't just lie to you? I said, I checked my Bible cover to cover one day and found out, you know what? God didn't tell me to love people unless they lie. I said, think for a moment. I says, okay, here's this street person, and they're out there scamming everybody for drug money, all right? And... Uh, but they, they think you believe their stories, all right? Okay, and so at some point, uh, they start realizing, you know what? The Christians, they were the, they were the, <laughs> they were the hardest person to get a nickel out of, all right? Because they, they, they had 100 questions and, and just absolutely refused to give me money unless they, they figured out they could trust me. And I, I, I couldn't trust me. But, you know, they never gave me a dime. Now, and so I, and I've come to a place in my life now where I'm saying, I need some answers. Am I going looking for Jesus? I don't know. But, you know, I, I would tell people, look, I, I don't know if I can really believe your story, but look, you know, you're hungry, obviously. Please get a sandwich with this. You know, I mean, yeah. You know, I, I'm not wearing shabby clothes because I did it. All right? I mean, I, I don't know the, the, the terrible thing that's happened in my life because I was generous with somebody that, uh, you know, their life was a mess and they, and they it needed something. And, and the Lord has repaid me. He's taken care of me. He's done so much. Second Corinthians 9, 7. Each one must do just as he has purposed in his heart, not grudgingly or under a compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. You know, if there's first a willing mind, if, you, if your heart is, is, is willing to give, it's according to what, what, what you have. You know, I, I tell people, sometimes people come to me and say, I don't know, where, where do I draw the line? You know, because maybe I've got a family member that I'm trying to help, and they're constantly coming to me for help, for help, for help, and I just don't know, I mean, should I just keep giving, giving, giving? I said, well, at some point, sit down, figure out what is it that you owe to other people, you know? I mean, you owe it to your family to put food on the table. You owe it to keep a roof over their head. Uh, you know, there's, there's things that, that, you know, that's not your money. Okay, and if God has provided that, that was to, to, to pay whoever you had to pay to provide. Because if you don't provide for your own, you're worse than an infidel. You know, don't don't uh, you know deny that. Okay, so uh, and then at the end you have this little bit of money. Uh, I think it's about fifty dollars a month for me. Okay, oh goodness, I can I can I can go buy myself something or something. Or you know, well, quite frankly. Um, I've got a willing heart, and I set aside some money. And uh, when somebody comes with a need, I know what I have that I can give. And if there's first a willing mind, it's accepted. I give according to what I have. All right. And so, but there's this this principle. Galatians two ten. They asked us. They only asked us to remember the poor, the very thing that I was eager to do. Okay. Paul went through this. Uh, thing where he's out there ministering to the Gentiles and the other Jews over here and and it was this controversy about whether or not Gentiles really could become Christians followers of Jesus without becoming Jews first and so in the outworking of all that they gave him a short list of things to avoid doing and this they added and remember the poor all right so you know we, we need to always be remembering the poor and so with this next scripture here I'm going to conclude John 8, 31. So Jesus was saying to those Jews who believed in him, if you continue in my word, then you are truly disciples of mine. All right, so that's, and I think that's what we do at Henry and Christian Fellowship, is we, we try to continue in God's word, uh, you know, so that we can, uh, you know, truly be his disciples. We really want to be uh, those who uh, follow him and represent him well and can be witnesses, encouragers, soul winners, uh, teachers of the good things that Jesus taught us. And so we're going to pray, and um, we're uh, going to pray. You know, Corinne out there on the front lines, uh, you know, and uh, I just think of her and all the others that are out there in the healthcare uh, arenas, and um, just uh, we're just going to pray for, for, for our community. And uh, so, Lord, we do. We pray today, Lord, that this word that you've given to us would settle down deeply into our hearts. And, uh, Lord, that, that we would uh, truly be followers of you, that we really take the time to understand and appreciate who you are, what you're like. And that when I 
call myself a Christian, one who's like Jesus. Uh, you know, I, Lord, I, I pray that, that people around me would recognize, yeah, you are, and uh, that, that I could be a witness to them. I want to be a witness not just to the unbelieving, but to the believing as well, uh, Lord, because uh, there's people around me that are believers that need encouragement even now. And so, Lord, we, I pray for them today. But, Lord, I pray for our nation, for our state, and for, for our area, Lord, for the, those who lead, Lord, to be wise. Lord, I, as power has a way of corrupting, and I know right now they're needing to exercise special authority. Uh, and so, Father, I pray that in their heart they'd have a reserve uh, that says to exercise it well, but not to go overboard in exercising it. And, uh, Lord, I pray uh, for our businesses, Lord, and for our churches and families, Ah, Lord, that you would be with us uh, to, to help us and to protect us. Uh, Lord, we pray against the spread of this COVID-19 virus and for the safety of, of all the people that, that, are, that are helping to stop the spread of it. And uh, Lord, we pray especially for the safety workers, the medical workers, the first responders, and all those essential jobs across our community. For the families that have been affected, Lord, we thank you that, that uh, Ms. Perez is, is getting better and that the rest of the family is, is recovering. And uh, Lord, we pray your blessing upon them. And uh, Lord, we pray for uh, just the economic stress and strain that's on people even now, Lord, that you would just help people, that you'd relieve the stress. And uh, Lord, when the time comes, uh, restore uh, the land, restore the prosperity uh, to your people. And uh, Lord, we pray for the supplies and for those that are working and trying to figure out how to get the supplies to the right places. We pray for truth. We pray for, uh, against fear and anxiety depression. Lord, we pray against those things and ask that you would lift people and use us to lift people as well. And we pray for peace, for comfort, and for people to come better through all the trials. And Lord, I pray for, for all of us that, that have faith in you, all of us who know you, uh, Lord, that in some way we could be Jesus Christ uh, represented uh, to another person today and this week. And, uh, and just help us, we pray in Jesus' name. So I'm going to encourage you, as I do every week here, except for one that I forgot, you know. So anyways, to take some time to, to be Henrietta Christian Fellowship and, uh, you know, go out there. Uh, you know, you got to stay six feet away, but find a way from six feet away to be a blessing to somebody today. And uh, with that, I'm going to say God bless you. We'll see you in, uh, on Wednesday night for Bible study and uh, perhaps again next week.